Hello, and welcome to Chapter 8. This is Problem 8-1, uh, Materials and Labor Variances. This is a very uh, good problem for this chapter because it just explains, it just shows um, how you need to track each variance. And there's ones for materials and there's ones for labor. And, oh, I'm also going to do a video on 7 because I guess that is that is gone over, but just a flexible budget has gone over. So I, I'll do a video on that too. But Okay, so um, for this example is Inge uh, Inspections Incorporated specializes in determining whether a building or house's drain pipes are properly tied into the city sewer system. The company pours colored chemicals through the pipes and collects an inspection sample from each outlet, which is then analyze. Each job should take 15 hours for each of four for each of four inspectors who are paid $18 an hour. Each job uses five gallons of bright, a colored chemical, which should cost $25 per gallon. Data from the company's most recent job also gives us data of five men working 80 hours at $17.50, and it multiplies them out. But I put it all up here, and it says. Uh, give us the materials, price, and quantity variances, and the labor and efficiency variances. And I also journalized them for you as well. So here, we've got a company that has a chemical. Um, so for materials, on the left side, you always do the actual quantity of materials times the actual price of materials. Gives us $151.25, which is what actually what they spent on it. Then you take the actual quantity of material, which is 5.5 .5 times the standard price of material, so what we thought they were going to be, which is $25, gives us $137.50. Next, it's the standard quantity times standard price. So the standard price, it should have been 5 gallons, it sh and it should have only cost $25 a gallon, which gives us $125. And so once you do actual quantity times actual price, actual quantity times standard price, and then standard times standard, you're going to have a variance. And so, as you can see, the, um, if the left side is higher than the right, it's unfavorable. So here, you, you, we subtracted the left from the right. The left was bigger, so it's $13.75 $13 unfavorable for the materials price variance. Over here, we have 137.50 minus 125. Whenever the left is bigger than the right, it's unfavorable. And favorable. If the right was bigger than the left, it's favorable. So here we have $12.50 unfavorable for materials quantity variance. We add, we, when, when both are unfavorable, you add them up. Your net variance is $26.26 unfavorable. So we actually spent more money than we should have on materials. It just it was, too, it was costly all across the board. Next we do labor. So labor is actual hours times actual rate. So 80 hours times the 1750 gives us $1,400 we spent on um, labor. But the, we then in the middle one, you do actual hours times the standard rate. So the 80 hours times the $18 an hour we should have paid them. So we actually paid them less an hour, what actually ended up happening, which turns out to be 1440 And then on the right, we have standard hours times standard rate. So four, and here's, you gotta be careful on the standard one sometimes, because here's the trick. We had four inspectors at $15 an hour, so four times 15 is 60. So once we have, so that's what we should have, that's the hours that should have happened. They, we had five inspectors, and they all worked 80 hours. We went over hours. So we have 60, 60 times the $18 an hour, which we thought was gonna happen, gives us $1,080. So if we take this minus this, so now here, the right's bigger than the left, it's favorable. We actually saved money on the labor rate. The, the labor rate variance is good. We saved about 40 bucks. But here, the labor efficiency variance, we thought they were only going to work 60 hours. They worked 80 hours. So 1,440 1, minus 1,080 is 360 unfavorable because the left's bigger than the right. So as you can see here, it's unfavorable, but now we minus the 360 from the 40 
gives us a net variance of 320 unfavorable. We lost money on that one too. And here's a journal entry you have, you have, you'd want to make after doing the chart. So for materials, you, uh, here's, here's a trick. The far right is always the work in process. So this is always going to be work in process for materials and for labor. So that, so work in process will debit for $125, and you always want to debit it because you're moving it from materials to work in process. And then if it's unfavorable for materials price variance or for materials quantity, it's always a debit. Unfavorables, unfavorables are debits. Favorables are credits. So we debit materials price variance and we debit materials quantity variance for the 1375 and for the 1250 respectively. And then we credit materials for the far left. You, this will always be the credit on the far left. $151.25 will be the credit to materials and you've done that. That's accomplished. Now for labor, labor is the same thing. So the far right, 1080 is what we're going to debit to work in process. So that's what we're shoveling into work in process because that's what we decided once you have the standard amount, which, what you suspect is what you're going to go with. And then any unfavorables or debits, the, the far left on labor is always going to be a credit to payroll. So this is always going to be a credit. So you credit payroll for 1400 because this is what actually happened. So that's what we actually paid them. But when we move from payroll into work in process, see how we're we're keeping track of the differences. So then when we look back, we'll say, well, maybe we'll tell the workers, the inspectors, hey, you need to watch your hours because we can't have you go over this much like this all the time because we only had it budgeted in for 1,080, but you went, you went, you went 360 bucks over, no good. That's you know that's that's basis of cost accounting. You got to keep track of that. And then here it's favorable, so it's a credit of labor rate variance, a credit of forty dollars. And so that was a uh, problem one eight materials and labor variances. I hope um, it helped you out. Uh, and I'll be back. I'm going to do chapter seven lecture and um, and chapter seven uh, problem. And I hope this helps. Uh, feel free to comment, um, subscribe to please, and uh, have any questions and ask and uh, like it if you will as well. And I'm looking forward to doing some more. Thank you, and I'll be back.